Hemi fans, listen up. We've got some very cool new components coming your way. I'm in the Frankenstein engine booth. I'm here with my friend, Jesse. Now, Jesse, you guys have some very cool new components, a whole new system that you've developed new this year. We do, absolutely. Uh, our new uh, P48 Evolution Hemi head is based on the uh, the tried and true 4800 bore space uh, Hemi platform. Um, however, uh, you know, this is a platform that hasn't changed in a long time, and we felt that it was time for a, a big remake. Um, you know, we saw a lot of problems, a lot of deficiencies, and, and a lot of technologies that come from some of our experiences with uh, other forms of drag racing, road racing, big block, small block. There are a lot of aspects to those engine, uh, those engine platforms that we were able to apply to this motor um, to really make the most out of this platform. And, and really, you know, we, we shot out to reinvent the wheel, and, and I really think we did a pretty damn good job doing that. Okay, Jesse, when you say reinventing the wheel, the Hemi has been around for a long time. What was your approach here? What were you trying to do? We, we knew that there was a lot more efficient way to get air in and out of the motor. So that was our first primary goal. That led us to a raised runner design. Now there are some constraints in the rules that um, dictated that, uh, you know, uh, uh, manifolds, exhaust manifolds, intake, uh, valve covers, all that stuff had to be interchangeable amongst all the acceptable components. Um, you know, so that had some engineering challenges, which we sorted away quick enough. We also uh, wanted to have a much more efficient combustion chamber um, so we could do more with that more air coming in and out of there. So what we did was we shallowed up the valves um, to the extent of the rules. Uh, we went from what would typically be a 100 plus cc chamber down to an 88, 89 cc chamber. That allowed us to get uh, 22 grams out of the piston we were using before. So that meant a lot lighter rotating assembly, meaning we were going to be able to rev faster and we we're going to be able to rev higher. Uh, now, once we got that stuff under our belt, then we realized that the rocker system and the valve train was going to be super important. Uh, we were running uh, half-inch uh, push rods, and we knew that wasn't enough. They were bending, they were flexing. We wanted to go a full 916 push rod. Um, we also wanted to do it without having a whole lot of intrusion into the port. Uh, so with the use of some offset ro uh, offset lifters, um, uh, coupled with uh, valve train from Reed Rockers, who uh, Daryl and I at Reed, um, we designed the valve train side of the head and the rocker system in parallel. So we constantly work back and forth with digital models, real world testing, and and our goal was to try to solve every point of failure that we had seen over his career and over all of our experiences. And so working together, we were able to achieve that. And what we ended up with was a rocker system that should be stable to 13, 14,000 plus RPM. We're still working on getting the rest of the stuff to keep up with that, but we know that we've got a solid, stable platform. We can get air in, we can get air out, we can spin that motor fast, and it'll survive up high. So that was the, the real key components that we put into this to do our version of reinventing the wheel. Well, that rocker assembly is definitely mean looking, and I also see a very cool intake manifold behind it. That is clean. Tell me your approach there. Um, you know, it was the same thing. It was all about, you know, just trying to get air in as efficiently as possible. You know, we, we opened up the uh, entryway uh, that the blower feeds the plenum. Um, we applied some technology uh, from uh, a lot of our, our big block Chevy racing days and a lot of our streetcar racing days in terms of runner taper, cross section, so that we could, we could get a proper taper into those runners. Nobody really does that they just sort of assume that oh it's under boost so it doesn't really matter the truth is it does matter and so we're able to get more air in there efficiently a more even distribution of air amongst all the cylinders and keep better atomization of the fuel in the process through, through the design of the plenum uh, and of course port match to you know our, our raised runner heads uh, they, they make a great combination and you top it off with some valve covers. Uh, we did, we did. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the last little accessory at the top was, uh, you know, we, we built billet valve covers, so we wanted them to be strong and durable. Um, we've seen a lot of cracking and other issues from some of the other cast versions that are out there. Um, so we managed to come up with something just as weight, or just as lightweight as some of those cast versions, but a lot stronger. Um, and some of the other places that we moved around, things like spark plugs to get kind of a more efficient chamber, you know, so all the, everything in the valve cover moved along with it. Um, and and, and overall, the package has been designed for you know ease of use and, and serviceability. We O-ring you know every surface of the head, including the uh, the exhaust manifold. Um, we we use uh, solid billet aluminum tubes for the spark plug tubes, so they're durable. They can take the abuse of being taken on and off every time after the race. Um, you know this stuff is not necessarily the the cheapest stuff out there. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we built something that was built like a tank, meant to make a lot of power and live long enough to keep doing it race after race.
Okay, so let's talk power. What numbers have you got that you can share with us? Uh, based on our, our previous combination and some of our baseline testing we got, we, we have a, an in-house mainline hub dyno, uh, which is, uh, on a separate note, really cool to put a funny car on a, on a chassis dyno and see what happens. Um, but anyway, so over our previous combination, our initial runs with less timing and a really safe tune, we were looking at three to four plus hundred horsepower gains to the wheels. Uh, and through a rather significant drivetrain loss, we are making a ton more power at the crank. And that was really just scratching the surface. Um, we still have a lot more testing to do, a lot more tuning to do, so we, we expect some really significant gains, and the mile an hour we're gonna put down the track is gonna show it. All right, so when is the first time you're putting this down the track? I wanna know. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I don't know what the first scheduled event is. We're going to be doing some testing over the winter in private, um, but I would imagine that the uh, first NHR event of the year will be right there showing our Frankenstein colors and flying down the racetrack. All right, I can't wait to be there and check that out. So obviously there's a lot to learn about here. Where can we go online to get some more info? Oh, sure. You can visit us online at frankensteined.net or visit us on uh, Twitter, Facebook, or any other social media apps. All right, Jesse Mayer with Frankenstein Engine Dynamics. Thanks for spending some time with us and stay tuned because there's a lot more coming your way from PRI.